Hey Shiloh Nation, it's Pastor Cheeks. Just wanted to thank each and every one of you for your love and your kindness, your beautiful birthday blessings. Thank you for the calls, the text messages, the posts on social media, uh, the emails, however it is that you sent your love. I greatly appreciate it and I thank God uh, for each and every one of you and certainly thank God for another year. God is good. He is so worthy to be praised. So we celebrate him and all that he has done. And we thank you all and celebrate with you what he has done, even for you all to be a blessing to me. So wanted to just say thanks and I love you. Thank you. God bless. Oh, shout out to all those celebrating their birthdays in December. Woo woo. All the Sages and I think Capricorns. Praise the Lord. God bless y'all. Have a beautiful month of celebrating what the Lord has done in your life.
praise God right where you are for our music ministry as they have led us through worship on this morning. I just want to take the time to thank Pastor Cheeks and our assistant pastor Lady Cheeks for this opportunity to stand with you on this morning to share with you on the second Sunday of Advent as we uh, continue to celebrate the, the season of our Savior's birth. I want to take the time to uh, bless God for my fellow um, associates, our brothers and sisters in the ministry for how God continues to minister to us through them. We just uh, praise God for one another and look forward to, to seeing how God continues to uh, lead us and teach us how to uh, serve his people. Uh, just for a few moments, would you turn with me right where you are to Luke chapter 2? Luke chapter 2, very familiar passage, verses 8 through 20. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. I'll be reading from the Christian Standard Bible and it reads um, as follows. In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flocks. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do, don't be afraid for I, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the city of David, a savior was born for you. Who is the Messiah, the Lord? This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with angels, with the angel praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to people he favors. Then when the angel had left them and turned, returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. After seeing them, they reported the message they were told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at, the shep at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart and meditating on them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. Let's praise God for his word. Just for a few moments, I would like to share with you from the topic, the good news of Christmas. The good news of Christmas. Let us pray. Most gracious and all wise God, our Father, we thank you for this time together virtually. Father, we ask that you would be with us now. Uh, Father, I ask that you would till the soils of our heart so that the good seed of your word would be planted, take root, and grow and transform us from the inside out. Father, right now, I, stand, I pray that you would stand up in me, speak through me and for me. Father, it is my prayer that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength and our redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The good news of Christmas. As we continue into another Advent season, one of the things I've learned is, learned to appreciate is the gift of Christmas movies. Uh, one of the common themes of Christmas movies is the, the triumph of good. Good triumphs in a wonderful life when George Bailey decides his life is worth living and the angel Clarence gets his wings. Good triumphs in the Christmas Carol when Scrooge decides to atone for his sins after encountering the ghost of Christmas past, present, and future. Good triumphs in Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer when Rudolph overcomes the bullying, survives the land of misfits, and saves Santa and Christmas. You see, good triumphs in movies such as This Christmas and 
almost Christmas when family overcomes differences and drama to enjoy the holiday season. Even in the sappy Hallmark Christmas movies, which I admit I've learned to enjoy, good triumphs when the main couple always overcomes discourse, discord, some form of discord, and ends up happily ever after. Brothers and sisters, I believe uh, appreciating these, I believe we appreciate these movies because we share an inherent desire for good to triumph. And I'm glad today because we serve a God who is intent on working things out together for our good. The Apostle Paul said it well, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. We can claim these promises because of the good news of Christmas. And in our text this morning, the good news is proclaimed as the birth narrative continues to unfold in the same region of Jesus' birth. As the text unfold, we see the reality of good news. We see the reason for good news and we see the response to good news. You see, in this region on the outskirts of Bethlehem, we find some shepherds uh, minding their business, toiling in the dark and tending their flock. And it's on this night. Uh, that seemed to be like any other night, an angel appears out of nowhere. We don't know what this angel looked like, but Luke tells us that the shepherds feared the appearance of the angels. But just as the angel eased the fears of Zachariah and Mary uh, earlier in Luke, verse 10 tells us that the angel eases the shepherds' concerns by telling them to fear not. By telling them not to be afraid. Because the angel came to bring good news that will be for all people. The angel tells us that the reason, the reality of good news is for all people. The angel tells us that the reality of good news is for all people. In other words, the angel is saying that something has happened. That can mean good for anybody. You see, this news did not discriminate. This news did not require a background check for it to be good. This news did not require a credit check for it to be good. This news did not require a, a salary cap or a floor for it to be good. This news did not require, uh, did not. Did not require one to be a certain race for it to be good. This news did not require one to be from a certain zip code for it to be good. No, the angel explicitly proclaims this happening is good for all people. The evidence that this good news is available to all people is in the fact that the first recipients of this good news were the shepherds. You see, the shepherds were a despised uh, class of people during this time. The shepherds were viewed as dishonest. The shepherds were deemed ceremonially unclean because they always dealt with the sheep. In fact, the only class of people that were deemed lower than the shepherds were lepers. And these are the people God chose to be the first recipients of the good news. You see, God did not go to the synagogue. God did not go to the temple. God did not go to the religious elites. God did not go to the Sanhedrin or the Pharisees. God did not look for the rise, wisest rabbi of that day. No, God sent God's angel to a field on the outskirts of Bethlehem to share good news with despised out with the despised outcasts of the culture of that day. You see this may uh come to news to some of you to in us in here today but we are the shepherds. I know you may not see yourselves as dishonest or as thieves however 
you know better than anybody in this set. You know you better than anybody uh, in your home right now. You know your flaws. You know your faults. You know your sins. You know your shortcomings. And uh, you know the darkness that you're dealing with right now. Just as the shepherds have uh, were toiling, minding their business in the dark. All of us have experienced some kind of darkness over this la over these last few years as we're dealing with uh, this pandemic and the effects of this pandemic on all of us. And as you know, uh, as well as you know yourself, as well as you have experienced as, as much darkness as you have experienced, God knows you better and God knows how to handle your darkness better than yourself. He knows the good. He knows the bad. He knows the ugly. He knows all that you are. He knows all that you're going through. He knows all that you're experiencing. And in spite of all that God knows, God still chose to speak to you and me. God still chooses to be in relationship with you and with me. God still gives us his grace. God still loves us. God still forgives us. And that shows us the reality of the good news of Christmas. You see, up, up until... Up until this point in the angel's proclamation, uh, the good news consists of the fact that the angels uh, sent, the good news consisted of the fact that God sent the angels to the shepherds. And as the angel continues the proclamation, we see, we see, we see the reason for the good news. You see, verse 11 and verse 12, the angel proclaims, For unto us, on verse 11 and verse 12, the angel says, The angel says, Today in the city of David, a Savior was born for you, who is the Messiah, the Lord. You see, in verses, in verse 12, he says, This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. This, the, 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 the reason for this good news is that a, a baby has been born. But this was just not any baby. This baby is the Savior who is the Christ, who is Christ the Lord. Born in David's town, this child clasped heavenly greatest tighter, greatest titles in his tiny fits. You see, first we see this baby is given three titles. The first title we, we see is given is he's called the Savior. You see, this is God's title. Mary references God as Savior in her song in verses in Luke verses 1 and 47. He will, he will follow in the biblical traditions. This baby will follow in the biblical traditions of deliverers such as uh, Moses, Joshua, Gideon, Samson, and David. The announcement of a savior is good news to a troubled, powerless people. In the need of a hero to overcome the enemy. So not only was God's people living under Roman oppression. But God's people were living under the oppression of Satan and sin. And this baby born in the city of David was the one who would save them. From their enemy. Alright. But secondly we see. The baby referred to as Christ. Or, or the Messiah. The, the promise or the, the anointed one. The king. The king who would. Be the, the heir. To David's throne. The, the deliverer. Of David's people. You see, the birth, birthplace of the king who first united the nation now becomes 
the birthplace of the king who would save the entire world. You see, the announcement of, Christ, uh, of the Christ is good news to a world filled with brokenness, division, helplessness, and hopelessness. So, first, this baby is referred to as the Christ. Secondly, this baby is referred to as... No, first, this baby is referred to as the Savior. Second, this baby is referred to as the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. And finally, we see this baby referred to as the Lord, uh, which is the title that Luke uses most often for Jesus. And this title reflects... Uh, this baby's holy, it, this title refers to the holy, unspeakable name of, of God's God self. So what Luke was letting us know is that this baby was God's God self with all this. This baby was God, God self with all power and authority under heaven laying in a manger. You see, the angel did not direct the shepherds to the four seasons. The angel did not direct the shepherds to the White House. The angels did not direct the, uh, the, direct the shepherds to an imperial palace. No, the angel sends the shepherds to a barn on the backside of the hood called Bethlehem and directs the shepherds to look in a manger, a trough where animals are supposed to eat. And that's where you'll find this baby, who's the promised Savior, Christ, and Lord for the entire world. You see, the location of this baby is, is good news because it shows us that God majors in using the that which the world seems minor in a major way for God's own glory. So don't you despise your small beginnings. Don't you dismiss where you are right now. Don't you dismiss what you're going through right now. Because God in his sovereignty can use whoever, whenever, however God wants to for God's own glory. Just in case... uh. Just in case the thought of God wrapping God's own self up in the flesh of a baby in a manger was too hard for you to believe, the heavenly mass choir of angels burst onto the scene confirming the first angel's uh, message and sings, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace amongst those whom he had, uh, whom he is pleased. You see, God revealed God's glory in the in God in the brilliance that the shepherds could recognize. You see, angels recognized the worth and the weight of God's presence and praised God for it. God gains glory, and and God gained the glory, uh, and people get. Peace. All this happens because the person and the work of this baby who was the reason for the good news the angels were thinking about. You see, the angels reveal the reality of good news. The angels express the, the reason for good news. And as the narrative continues to unfold, the shepherds show us the right response to good news. In verse 15, the text tells us when the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened which the Lord has made known to us. You see, the first response to this good news is, is movement. You see, the shepherds had to, to leave their current location, uh-huh, to experience God's word. You see, throughout 
uh, the, 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 the Bible through the biblical history, God is constantly sending people. You see, God sent Abraham from the land of Ur. Uh, God sent Moses to Egypt. God sent David to battle Goliath. God sent Jonah to the Ninevites. God sent his prophets to his people. You see, God's word challenged the recipient to move from the comfort and the familiar in order to experience the promise, the power of his promises. Like the shepherds, we are all we all come to a crossroad in our lives where we must decide if we are going to take God at his word and see what the end is going to be or if we want if we're going to remain in the place called familiar. You see, God may not call you to move geographically, but God does challenge you to move from some bad habits. God does challenge you to move from some, some, some bad people. You see, God does challenge you to move on from some faulty ways of, of thinking. And the good news of moving according to God's word is that God is faithful. Oh, yes, he is. Verse 16 tells us that verse 16 tells us they hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and uh and the baby who was lying in the manger. You see, in other words, they went and found exactly what uh the angels told them that they will find. And the second response we see to the good news was uh, the second response we see is that the shepherds uh, share the good news. You see, after the shepherds witness all that the angel said was true, they shared the good news with everyone who was on the scene. The, the, the shepherds told everyone about everything the angel said and everything the angel said about the baby. Imagine the scene with me. Uh, you have a young couple with a wife that has given birth to, to, to a son in a, in a barn or, or a cave and Surely others are gathered around because of the commotion of the situation. And then you have these, these strangers, these, these shepherds, uh, a group of people who are, who, are, who are despised and looked down upon that, that nobody wanted to deal with. And they show up uh, proclaiming that this baby is the, the savior of the world. They show up proclaiming that this baby is the promised Messiah. They show up proclaiming that this baby is the Lord, the Lord, uh, the Lord's own self wrapped up in human flesh. Can you imagine uh, the foolishness, the brother, how foolish these brothers must have sounded in? In verses 17, uh, the text tells us that after seeing them, they reported the message that uh, they were told about this child and uh, all who heard it, all who heard it were amazed. And the text tells us that uh, the shepherd's words confirmed everything uh, Mary had heard from the angel Gabriel. And I would imagine that these words encouraged her as she wrestled with uh, all that she has experienced over the last month. You see, I'm sure uh, she needed a word of encouragement as the, the rumor mill concerning the paternity of her, of her baby uh, began to float around. Just as the angels shared the good news with the shepherds, uh, the shepherds shared the good news with Mary and Joseph, you and I are responsible for sharing the good news uh, of, Je of who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. You see, being a recipient of the good news is not, uh, 
It's not all about you. You see, this responsibility of sharing the good news, it does not require a title. This responsibility of sharing the good news, it does not require a pulpit or a platform. The responsibility of sharing the good news does not require a ordination or license, uh, 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 ordination certificate or a ministerial license. This responsibility requires a willingness to move out of where you are to trying God's word, experiencing God's word and telling somebody who God is and what he has done in your life. So the shepherds respond uh, to the good news by moving and sharing. And finally, the shepherds show us that we respond to good news with celebration. You see, in verse 20, the text tells us that the shepherds return glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen and all the things that they had heard uh, were just as they had been told. You see, we don't know if... Uh, you see, we don't know that they, they celebrated and they glorified God as they returned to the fields because they found out or they experienced that God is faithful. They, it, they found out that God is a God of God's own word. We don't know what they were singing. We don't know if instruments were involved, uh, but we do know that they celebrated the goodness of their God. What really uh, messed me up is that the shepherds celebrated about seeing the, the, the baby Jesus. You see, Jesus had not preached his first work, his first sermon, but the shepherds celebrated. Jesus had not taught his first lesson, but the shepherds celebrated. Jesus had not healed uh, his first sick person, but uh, the shepherds celebrated. Jesus had not uh, cast out any demons, but the shepherds celebrated. Jesus had not calmed any storms, but the shepherds celebrated. Jesus had not raised anyone from the dead, but the shepherds celebrated. Jesus had not carried the sins of the past, present, and the future, but to the cross, but the shepherds celebrated. Jesus had not died the death that you and I deserved, but the shepherds celebrated. Jesus had not been buried in a borrowed tomb, but the shepherds celebrated. Jesus had not been raised up with all power in his hands, but the shepherds celebrated. Oh, brothers and sisters, if the shepherds were willing to celebrate uh, based on a preview of the story, how much more should you and I be willing to celebrate the good news of the person and the work of Jesus Christ if we know how the story ends? Is there anybody in here willing to celebrate the good news uh, of who God is and what God has done? If he saved you, if God has saved your soul, you ought to celebrate. If God has made you whole, you ought to celebrate. If God has healed your body, you ought to celebrate. If God has opened doors, you ought to celebrate. If God has mended your broken heart, you ought to celebrate. If God has been your provider, you ought to celebrate. If God has been your heart fixer and your mind regulator, you ought to celebrate. Not only do we celebrate uh, and appreciate for what he has done, we ought to celebrate with it be it with confidence of what he shall do. God will be your hope for tomorrow, so you ought to celebrate. God will be your joy in the midst of sorrow, so you ought to celebrate. God will walk you through the valley of the shadow of death, so you ought to celebrate. God will make your enemies your footstool, so you ought to celebrate. God will uh, never leave your or forsake you, so you ought to celebrate. God will keep you, so you ought to celebrate. God will keep you, give you peace, so you ought to celebrate. God will walk with you and tell you that you are his own, so you ought to celebrate. So just like the angels, just, and it, it just as the shepherds respond, you ought to celebrate the good news of Christmas throughout this Advent season because God has 
kept us through all of this pandemic. God has kept us through all of this year. And the fact that you are here on this first Sunday of good of, of, of December is good news. And we ought to celebrate the good news of Christmas right here where we are. Praise God for his word on this morning. Let's take the time right now to lift God up and celebrate him for the fact that he's brought us into another Advent season. A season of anticipation. A season of expectation. A season of hope. A season of joy where we can be confident that God can break into darkness and show us his marvelous light. There may be one with us on this morning who's connected with us virtually who may not know of this good news that we're celebrating right now. I want to offer good news to you on this morning. In spite of where you are, in spite of what you're going through, in spite of what you think or feel about yourself, your creator desires to be in relationship with you. He's given you everything that you need in the person, in this gift of his son, our savior, Jesus Christ, for you to be in relationship with them. So I offer him up to you on this morning. If you want to take a, take a step of faith and give your heart to God, I offer him to you. He's waiting in open arms for you to experience this good news that we've just been sharing about. So this first, uh, first uh, petition is for Christian discipleship. And maybe you're in a relationship with God, but somehow, someway, something has, has happened. You're, you know your relationship is not where it needs to be. And you want to rededicate your life to God. Second petition is for, for rededication. Third petition is for church membership. Maybe you just saw this live thread and you just tuned in to Shiloh Baptist Church and you've experienced our worship and you want to find out more about Shiloh. You want to connect with this church and let this church be the place where you can connect, grow, and serve with us as we advance the kingdom of God. I want to offer church membership to you. So there are three petitions on the floor. One for Christian discipleship. One for sal one or salvation. One for rededication. And one for church membership. If that's you on this morning. Type in the comments. Look up the church's website. Connect with us and we'll be sure to, to reach out to you via Facebook, via YouTube, via email to the church. And let you know what you need to be, uh, what needs to be done so you can be a part of Shiloh. Go on this journey with God with us as we advance the kingdom. Our pastor and our assistant pastor, the Reverend Dr. Robert F. Cheeks, and our first, our assistant pastor, Minister uh, Constant Cheeks, they would love to be your pastors. We would love to be your church family. We would love to be the community of disciples where you can learn all that God has in store for you and learn how God for you to learn how God can use you to change the world if there's one on this morning please please again comment whatever uh, streaming service that you use leave a comment go to the church's website and let us know you know you want to connect with us and we'll be sure to get back to you as fast as we can so right where you are, brothers and sisters, let us pray. Let us let us close out in prayer. Right where you are, most gracious and all wise God, our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this virtual worship experience. Father, we just thank you for who you are and what uh, you continue to do in our lives. Father, we thank you for getting us to this Advent season in 2021. Father, we thank you for being who you are and what you've done, Father, I pray that the good news of the birth of your son would continue to uh, leave us in awe of your capacity to love us. 
Father, I pray that the reality of uh, the gift of your son would shape us in a way where we will always be in awe and gratitude of your love towards us. And Father, right now, I just pray that you would continue to be with us as we celebrate who you are and what you've done to us through this season. And Father, I ask that you would continue to give us joy and, and hope and peace in this season after all we've experienced in this year. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, may the, the love of God and the sweet communion of your spirit rest, rule, and abide with these your people henceforth now and forevermore. And all of God's children said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Praise God for the good news of Christmas.